Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here talking about the new month and how the sacred months are to be determined by the new moon. It's extremely important to understand how this element of our Father's calendar works because of feast days. If you don't know the first day of the month, how will you know the 15th day of the month? And you can see clear evidence on several popular YouTube channels, guys creating calendars with feast days falling in random times of the year. The intent of this video is to educate you on the true timing of the month so when you see those calendars you'll know if they're telling you right or if they're leading you astray. Now I know I've said this before in about a half a dozen other videos we've done on the subject but in this video we have some new scriptural evidence to present and with it I'm sure that it will be the proof everybody needs to know how to determine the beginning of the sacred month. Now I have to give credit to a commenter who goes by the name PG for this information. In all of these 25 years of studying our father's calendar I always knew that the new moon was the head of the month but I didn't know this what PG is stating when she says that in the Tanakh there is no such thing as a new moon I didn't know that when I come over to the King James Version of the Bible and do a search for the phrase new moon I find 21 hits so what's the deal is it that PG doesn't know what she's talking about well to be a humble servant of the Lord you can never just dismiss comments so Let's dig in to see what she's talking about. Now, of course, the first verse that I wanted to look at is Psalms chapter 81 and verse 3, which says, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon and the time appointed and the feast days. Now, this is always a verse of controversy when it comes to this discussion because many people using other translations than the King James Version we'll see that it says full moon instead of time appointed. Now in the New King James Version of the Bible, it uses capitalization to distinguish the difference between what it's talking about in the first phrase and what it's talking about in the second phrase. The way I'm reading this, where it says at the full moon is an entirely new sentence. But those who like to use this verse in their argument won't touch the New King James Version, they'll go straight to a translation like the English Standard Version where it's not so clear. So let's dig deeper and let's see who's right. Now the first thing that we'll do is we'll come over to BibleHub.com in their interlinear Bible where we're given the Strong's numbers for these two different moons. You see here that it says that the new moon is Strong's number 2320 and the full moon is 3677. Let's start with 3677 first. Only because when we look at Strong's number H3677 we see that it's only used two times in the Bible. Psalms 81 of course but is also used in Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 20. But notice the King James Version is using the word appointed just like it did in Psalms 81. Instead of saying full moon it says appointed. In fact when we come back over and search BibleGateway.com in the King James Version for the phrase full moon we see there are no full moons in the King James Version. You have to go to one of the other translations to see the word full moon. The King James Version says in the time appointed and I believe that's correct in the reading because of how it seems to be talking about the solemn feasts like the New King James Version is trying to tell us that the full moon is associated with the solemn feast day what that's talking about is the Feast of the Covenant that we find in the Book of the Covenant, Exodus chapter 23, where it's talking about how three times in a year we are to appear before the Lord 
is talking about the feast days of unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, or what they call Pentecost, and the feast of end gathering that we know as the feast of tabernacles. These are the mandatory feasts. There are seven feasts total that you can read in Leviticus 23, but there are only three of them mentioned in the book of the covenant. That's why they call them high holy days. They are the mandatory feasts. Well, what you notice in all three of these feasts is that they all fall on the full moon, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the 15th day of the first month, the Feast of Harvest or First Fruits or Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks, whatever you want to call it. That starts around the 15th day of the third month and the Feast of Tabernacles starts around the 15th day of the seventh month. And we learn from Enoch in the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven that on the 14th and the 15th day of the sacred month, the moon is full. All three festivals are on the full moon. Well, that's what Psalms 81 and 3 is talking about when it says to blow the trumpet at the full moon on the solemn feast day. But anyway, that's not PG's argument. What she is saying is that there are no new moons in the Bible whatsoever. So let's look at this a little bit closer to see if she's right. We come back over to the Antilinear Bible, finishing up with Psalms number 3677. The last thing I want to point out to you here is how the definition of the word is full moon. But now when it's talking about the new moon, it has Strong's number 2320. And when we look at the definition of it, it says new moon, but notice also that it says a month. It says that the transliteration of the word is Chodish, if I'm pronouncing that right. And when I come over and try to get a definition of that word Chodish, you see that Wikipedia is saying that it's the head of the month. But if you don't like Wikipedia, you see that myjewishlearning.com also says that Chodish is the head of the month. Chabad.com says the new lunar month for the definition of Chodish. And I could go on and on. Concordance number 2320 is talking about the month. But anyway, let's come back over here because her bold statement was is that there are no new moons in the Bible. So let's look a little bit closer at 2320. Like we said, there's over 20 times that it's used. Let's look at a few of these. Genesis chapter 7 uses Chodesh as month. Chapter 8 and verse 4, you see Chodesh as month. Verse 5 is talking about month for Psalms number 2320. Verse 13 calls it a month. 14 calls it a month, 29 and 14 calls it a month, 38 and 24 is talking about months. And all of the times that we see Psalms number 2320 in the book of Genesis, it doesn't say moon or new moon, it just says month. And it's repeated in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 2, and verse 3, and verse 6, and verse 18. Chapter 13 says month. In verse 4 and verse 5, chapter 16 says month, chapter 19 says month, 23 month, 34 month. So I believe she's right. In all of these times that we see the word new moon listed here, what we should be saying is the word new month. We might be saying new moon in English, but the original writers we're saying new month. Well, you might be saying, are there other times in the Bible when we see the word moon and it's not talking about the new month? Well, yes. You see, concordance number 3394 has the definition of moon. We see it in Genesis chapter 37 and verse 9 when it's talking about the sun and the moon. So now it's clearly not talking about a month at all. It's talking about that orb that seems to be orbiting our planet that we refer to as the moon. The same in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and 19 is talking about the sun and the moon 
and it's using Psalms number 3394 instead of 2320. Deuteronomy 17 and 3 is the same. Sun and the moon. Joshua 10 and 12 is talking about the moon and not the month. 2 Kings 23 and 5, sun and the moon. Job 25 and 5 is saying, behold, even the moon. Again, talking about the orb in the sky. It's clear to me, and maybe it is to you too, that when the scripture was talking about the moon, it uses Psalms number 3394, but when we see the word moon in conjunction with new, as in new moon, is using concordance number 2320, which is actually talking about the Chodesh or the head of the month, the beginning of the month. Anytime we see new moon in our Bibles, we should be reading new month. Now, there are other words that are defined as moon in the Bible. For instance, concordance number 3842 that we see in Psalms 6 and verse 10 is defined as moon. But we see again that it's talking about the moon and not talking about the month. In Isaiah chapter 24 and 23, it's talking about how the moon will be abashed or confounded. It's not saying that the month will be confounded. In Isaiah 30 and 26, it's talking about the light of the moon, not the light of the month. So 3842 is different than the month. It's just talking about the moon. There are moons in the Bible, like concordance number 4582, which is defined as the moon. That's in the New Testament, and you see it's talking about when the moon will be darkened. The month won't be darkened. The moon will be darkened. You see that in Mark as well, when it's saying that the moon will not give its light. Acts is talking about the moon. 1 Corinthians is talking about that orb in the sky we know as the moon. Even the book of Revelation is talking about that inferior illuminary that we call the moon. Again, that's 4582 in the New Testament. But when we come over to concordance number 3561, we see it's defined as new moon. And look at the usage. Even in the New Testament, it says the new moon first of the month. We see that in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16 and it's talking about the new moon celebration. And what is the new moon celebration? That's similar to a Sabbath day. It is that monthly event where we get a spiritual renewal. That occurs at the beginning of the month or the first day of the month. Well, first Colossians could have very well have said do not let anyone judge you with regard to a new month celebration. So, I learned something today. There are no new moons in the Bible. Every time you see the word new moon, you need to mentally replace it with new month. It appears as though never was the scripture pointing to the actual sliver of the moon that we call the new moon. It only used the phrase new moon because that's how we know the beginning of the month. We tell the new month by the new moon. And in our scripture, those words are synonymous. New moon means new month. So thanks, PG, for your comment. And I want to thank all of you guys for your comments. If you would, jump down in the comment section of this video and let me know what you think. Are you now convinced that the new moons in the Bible are referring to the new month? It's important that we get this right. If you don't know the first day of the month, then how would you know the 15th day of the month when those solemn feast days occur? Well, I could point you to a half a dozen channels that needs this information because they are creating calendars with months starting at arbitrary times and they have their followers celebrating feast days based on random start dates of the month. We can't just celebrate feast days anytime we want, guys. So it's important to get this right. And I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't and you disagree, go ahead and hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And shalom.